All right, this is 11, uh, lesson 11.2 on compound probability. Compound probability consists of two or more events Um, independent event is when the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of the other event. And so we have that formula here. A dependent event is when the occurrence of one event has an effect on the probability of the other event. And we can use this formula. And conditional probability is the probability of B given A has already occurred. We can represent it um, by that. Okay, so we have three different formulas we're going to use for this lesson. In this first part, let's determine first if events are independent or dependent. Okay, you flip a coin and then roll a six-sided die. The coin, the coin lands heads up and the die shows an even number. Doing those two things, do are they independent or dependent? They are independent. Okay, they're independent of each other. Letter B. There are 15 shirts in your closet, 7 blue and 8 green. You randomly select one to wear on Monday and then a different one on Tuesday. You wear a blue shirt on Monday and a green shirt on Tuesday. These are going to be dependent, assuming you didn't do your laundry, <laughs> um, because once you wear the one shirt, you're not going to wear it again. Letter C. You have a bag with 22 marbles, 10 red, 8 blue, and 4 green. You select a red marble and then replace it, and next you pick a green marble. Well, because we re replaced the red marble that we had originally picked, it's not the next picking is, um, time you're going to pick is not going to be affected by that, right? We're replacing it. So anytime you see replace, these are going to end up being independent events of each other. Let's look at scenario D. You have a, a bag with 20 marbles, 7 red marbles, 4 blue, and 9 green. You select a blue marble, but you do not replace it. Next, you select a red marble. Okay, these will be dependent okay, because the blue marble is gone and there's less marbles in the bag, so we have to take that in consideration. And that's the difference between independent and dependent. Let's look at finding probability of events. And let's start with first the independent events. Example one, P of A is nine over 20 and P of B is uh, two fifths. So this is the probability of A probability of B. We want to know P, um, P of A and B. So we're going to put it into our formula. And we know it's P of A times P of B. So we'll have 9 twentieths times 2 fifths. And we can kind of simplify here. We know this will be 10, this will be 1, and we end up with the P of A and B is 9 over 50. All right, let's look at example two. We have P of A is one half, P of A and B is one tenth. So let's substitute into our formula. We'll put one tenth for P of A and B equals P of A times P of B. Okay, so that's the probability of B is what we're looking for. And we'll multiply by two and we'll end up getting two tenths, which is one fifth. Okay, let's look at an actual example. There are four nickels and seven dimes in your pocket. You randomly pick a coin out of your pocket and then return it to your pocket. Then you randomly pick another coin. What is the probability that the first coin is a nickel and the second coin is a dime? So the probability of A and B. We said the first coin is a nickel. So we said there were four nickels, four nickels out of 11 coins in your pocket times the probability of B, seven dimes, and remember we, we we replaced the nickel that we chose first and out of 11 coins again. So we would end up getting 28 divided by 121, which is approximately 23.1% chance. Okay, now let's look at some dependent events. First, in the first two examples, we're using the formula. So we know we have P of A is 2 fifths. P of B if A is three-fifths, okay? So P of A and B is going to be P of A, two-fifths, and times P of B if A already occurred, right? So that would be our three-fifths, which will give us six 
out of 25. Okay. Now we're given some different information in example 5. We're given P of A and B is 3 twentieths, and P of the probability of B given A is 1 fourth. So we're going to substitute that in. 3 twentieths equals P of A, we don't know, times 1 fourth, which means we we'll multiply by 4, so we'll get 12 over 20, which is 3 fifths. And let's look at an actual scenario. In example 6, a cooler contains 15 bottles of sport drinks. We have 8 lemon-lime flavored and 7 fruit punch flavored. You randomly grab a bottle and give it to your friend. Then you randomly grab a bottle for yourself. Okay, we did not replace the bottle, obviously. If you're giving it to your friend, they're going to drink it. Okay, so what is the probability that you both get a lemon-lime bottle? So probability of A and B happening. All right, so we know that we want the lemon-lime, and there are a total of 15 bottles, and eight are lemon-lime. And we also want our friend to have that. Well, now we only have 14 bottles left, and only seven lemon-lime. Lemon so we will multiply that, and we end up getting 4 over 15, which is approximately 27.7% chance of that happening. Okay, let's do our last section on conditional probability. Again, in example 7 and 8, we're just going to give the information and use the formula. So we want to know what the probability of B happening if A occurred. So in this case, we're going to do P of A and B, one-tenth, divided by P of A, which will give us two-fifths. In example 8, we're given P of B and P of A and B, so we know we can find P of A if B occurred by having 13 over 50 divided by one-half, which will give us 13 fifteenths. And again, we want to put this in some real-world context. So example 9, at a coffee shop, 75% of customers order coffee. Only 30% of customers order coffee and a bagel. What is the probability that a customer who orders a coffee also orders a bagel? Well, we know P of A is going to be coffee. We said that's 75%, so we're going to put 0 0.75. And probability of B is going to be our bagel. And of both of them, B of A and B, so this is our both, we can say we know that's 0 0.30. So if I want to find P of B if A, I'm going to have my 0.3 divided by my 0.75 using our formula. If you go back to the first page, which will give us 40% chance. Okay, so again, I was just using the formulas from the first page for all of these um, independent, dependent, and conditional probability examples. And this is um, lesson 11.2 on compound probability.